Hello, welcome to The Long Road. My name is Chris Roberts. This is what this show is going to be about is uh, us as a storm center. We didn't get the hurricane as we thought we were going to be. We didn't get the damage that we thought it was going to happen. But you're going to get a copy of how the process works when we have an emergency in Keene or the, the surrounding area. And so at the end, I hope you learned from this. And um, if you have any other questions, feel free to call um, City Hall and say, hey, what about this? Bill Propop was really good on volunteering service. So, again, enjoy the, um, the show, and let's be thankful and that it wasn't any worse than it was. And so, I'll see you out there on the dry road this time. Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, Keene State College. <clears throat> Working hard, trying to clean up as much debris as possible. Hopefully to eliminate as much airborne possibilities. A lot of time, most of the damage is caused <clears throat> by things that tend to go airborne. We're at Hannaford's. It's at about 10.30 on Saturday. It feels just like a day at the beach down in South Carolina. Very little breeze. The flag's not hardly moving at all. We'd probably say two to three mile an hour wind. Very humid though. Hannaford is pretty packed. Matter of fact, even on the J.C. Penney side, there's quite a few cars. But a lot of these cars are for people going into Hannaford's. Hannaford's is pretty busy inside. I don't know if it's because of the anticipated storm, but the fresh fruits and some of the produce prices have seemed to drop. Maybe they just don't want to get stuck with them <clears throat> for the next couple of days and have them rot on the shelves. So people's actions are showing that they're anticipating something but the weather outside, except for the humidity, just seems like another dog day, August dog day. Dog days of the summer. But it could all change in a matter of hours. But these are the smart people. They're being prepared. We're here at Ashwillet Dam, off of West Street. It's about one o'clock Saturday. It's starting to get overcast. The humidity is pretty high, probably about 90%. As you can see, the water flow is pretty mild. Nothing spectacular for this time of the year. We'll see what it's like in about another 24 hours, maybe 36 hours. Blood stage is supposed to possibly blood stage in Monday, late Monday night, well, early Monday morning. And we'll just have to see whether the forecasters are correct or not. It's about 6 o'clock. The rains have started. Wind's picked up, but nothing big. I'm standing right here at Cumberland Farms. We, talk, we heard about the refineries um, and distribution centers shutting down in New York and New Jersey. Right now, of all the pumps, all except one pump is bagged. It seems that, here it is, it's the beginning, and Cumberland Farms is out of gasoline. So, we don't know what to look forward to. Could this be one, two, three, possibly three, four days without gasoline? 
what are we going to do? <clears throat> then the big question would be, will there be price gouging? Would we expect a big bump up in price, gasoline prices over the next few days? Uh, let's hope not. But it just seems weird. A Saturday night, 6 o'clock, and no gas at one of the biggest gas stations in Keene. The rain's starting to get a little heavier now. We're here at the new YMCA. It's not fully finished, as you can see. We don't have no wind. There is little to no wind right now. We'll be able to come back tomorrow to see how this building um, withholds, withstands the wind. Looking at the possibility right now, about an hour and a go, the map said Athol Mass would be getting up to 74 mile an hour winds. This building could be at risk. It's not buttoned up. For someone who's been through hurricanes down in um, North, South, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, this is one of the hazards. The wind gets in through an open building and causes an uplift on the roof. People have worked so hard for this Y. And hopefully that when I come back tomorrow or the day after, there'll be little to no damage at all. They just want to get in. They don't want any more delays. And hopefully Mother Nature will not delay them. Here we are at the other side of the Y. One of the benefits that they had talked about in their design was the containment, con catchment area for the water. You can see how much water has been contained right here. This is the value of the wetlands. Water here is not water flooding. It may not look like a lot of water, but there's an awful lot of water right here. If you go up the side street, up to the condominiums, there's a lot of water on the side of the road already. On the other side, on this side of the road, there is no water. It's all draining off into this containment area. Again, the Y, it's a beautiful building. Let's hope it stays that way. It's still really the calm before the storm. You get the little fog coming over the mountains. Hopefully we won't have violent thunderstorms. People sometimes forget hurricanes can produce some pretty bad thunderstorms. It's 8 o'clock Sunday morning, August 28th. Had a very peaceful night, very little wind, a little bit of rain off and on. About 5-10 minutes ago we just had one of those leading bands of rain come through. It's not raining very hard at all right now, but this is Foster Street, right off Grove. It's usually one of the first places to flood. This is what happened with about a 10-minute ten, ten um, rain bend. <clears throat> and so, and mostly all the sewer drains were drained out. They performed the uh, maintenance. So, it could be a, a long day or two for the people on Foster Street. So when the city does its voluntary <coughs> evacuation, hopefully the people around here will take it and seek higher ground. Less than 24 hours ago, this side of the barrier on the Ashwillet River was almost completely dry. Still haven't had a lot of rain, but it's come up quite a bit. I would say maybe five to six feet since um, yesterday at about 10 o'clock. We got another band of rain getting ready to come through. <clears throat> Winds are still pretty slow. But if the next 12 hours when we can expect maybe 10 to 12 inches of rain, if that happens, it doesn't look very good for the low-lying areas at King State College especially the dorm that lines the, um, the Ash River Riverbank before Highway 101. If 
looking at the trees, the wind's on, it's not going very hard, not blowing very hard. Hurricane Irene is no more. It's been downgraded to a tropical storm. The risk of the 70, 80 mile an hour winds seem to be dropping off drastically. It's still a 50% possibility of winds into the 50 to 55 mile per hour range. And let's hope that the rain comes down at a steady inch an hour pace instead of one of those torrential downpours maybe get two to three inches in one hour. That's going to be pretty tough for the small rivers that the Ashville to hold on to. Here we can see one of those rain bands that are moving in, rain coming down at a pretty hard and steady clip. The wind's starting to pick up, pushing the rain down. The wind picking up. Not too many people out this morning. <clears throat> now you can see the intensity of the rain bands picking up. Winds getting stronger. See how quickly it can puddle up. Due to the August rains, the ground is pretty saturated. So the ground isn't going to be of much help soaking up the rains. In a lot of ways, the grounds almost be like asphalt. Saturated ground is actually going to speed up the rain pour more of the runoff and pour more of it into the roads.
Sunday night, we're finally going to fix um, Grove Street. And we're going to finally fix Grove Street, fix the sewer and drainage, the whole works. Oh, yeah, that's, um, that's Ned Stout. He's your asshole. That's Ned Stout, the asshole. He's the crib man. In a half, less than a half hour, a couple of rain bands. The flooding here on Forster Street is getting much worse. A little bit farther down, water is about six inches high. It's probably come up another 40 feet up the road towards Grove Street. And even right now here at the corner in Marlboro Grove and Marlboro Street, the water is starting to puddle up in some of the low-lying areas. Another rain band doesn't look very good. There's a really good possibility there's going to be an awful lot wet wet cellars here on Grove Street. Definitely on Foster Street. Across the street would be passable, just barely, but there's probably no doubt in my mind there'll be some people trying to scoot down Forster Street as fast as possible to make the waves as big as possible. I'm here with Chief. Chief Phil Terrell. And what's your position, Chief? Uh, Chief Coordinator for Southwestern New Hampshire District Fire Mutual Aid. Irene, should keep you kind of busy today? She's going to keep us very busy, I'm afraid. It's already started with uh, trees and wires down and uh, fortunately no flooding yet. Well, there's a little bit of flooding by my house on Forster Street, but that always happens. But I saw a few dumb people this morning going flying down. It's well, one of your biggest risks, people going to watch public People uh, driving a little too fast for the road conditions. Uh, that's what caused the majority of our accidents. We've had a few rollovers this morning due to that. Um, but uh, it could have been worse. We expect uh, as a noontime nears, uh, we'll be uh, much busier. So we've got additional staffing coming in uh, to help out with the uh, events of the day, and uh, we'll be well covered. And you're not you're not here just for King. You're for we're for uh, the 78 communities in New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts that we provide a emergency dispatch service to. When I was looking at the map, it said, for example, hurricane force winds that like for Athol and around that area. Do you get involved in any of that area? Uh, that's a little south of our uh, mutual aid system, but we start uh, getting touched when it comes uh, as north as far as Winchenden, Mass, and Royalston. Those are our communities. Uh, we'll help out with whatever uh, needs they have. Uh, we expect those winds will continue right into our system, and uh, so we, we are in anticipation of uh, a busy day. Do you uh, get some stupid people to think that this is a great time to drop a kayak? Well, we have had those uh, issues in the past, and I have no doubt but what they're uh, just waiting in, uh, in the wings to, for the water to rise so they can do that, and we, I guess we, we can't fix stupid. We had talked to me about six, seven months ago. You were talking about um, a swift water or a water rescue team? Well, the, the city of Keene uh, and uh, some of the other uh, departments in our mutual aid system have done some training for swift water rescue and have equipment uh, to handle those sort of uh, rescues should they occur. 
Um, so we do have, uh, you know, different departments we can call on if we need uh, them for that sort of uh, an event. And one more quick one. I went down by the Ashville River this morning. The water's about five feet higher than it was yesterday on the portion that they had, dry, had kept me dry. Yes. And it looks like um, it's anything like the 2005 when the rain comes. That could put King State College and people farther down the Ashville River in a flood area. I, I, I think you're absolutely right, and I think the city of Keene has been out um, handing out some brochures this morning asking people to voluntarily uh, evacuate certain areas. Uh, based on, you know, the history of the city. And so uh, hopefully those people will uh, listen to that sort of uh, warning and, uh, and adhere to it. Uh, the other thing is that uh, unlike the, uh, the floods of uh, 2008 and before, uh, we haven't had a substantial amount of rainfall uh, prior to this storm. So that may be a bit of a saving grace for us. And one, people are saying, well, the weatherman says it could be cleared up by tonight. Do you think this could last more than a few days in potential danger? I, I think that uh, we got to listen to what the weather forecast is telling us and the weatherman. I think we, we will see some clearing by tomorrow, and uh, but I think there will be some devastation that will have to be dealt with, uh, trees and wires down. Public Service has got additional crews uh, lined up to come in and uh, help with uh, restoring power and that sort of thing. But. I think uh, for today, there could be some widespread power outages and people will be without power for a period of time. And, some, and sometimes people forget about the storm because flood, flood danger is two, two, two to three days later as the water runs down. That, that's correct. As uh, it moves uh, further to the north, it, it, the southern area of the state will be hit much, much a few days later for the flooding, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you, Chief. Yeah, you're welcome, Chris. Okay, you can tell the people you need. My name is Gary Lamro. I'm the Fire Chief Emergency Management Director for the City of Keene. And where are we right now? Right now we're in the City of Keene's uh, Emergency Operations uh, Center. And we'll get purpose? it. Uh, the purpose of the Emergency Operations Center is to gather all the organizations throughout the city and have uh, proper communication to be able to handle any type of situation that occurs, such as a natural disaster. Uh, this is set up also for uh, Vermont Yankee. And we also use this actually for Pumpkin Fest. This is the operation center that we use to manage the Pumpkin Fest problem. Did you learn any lessons at yeah, just from let 2005 flood? Absolutely. Um, anytime that you have a, uh, an actual event, you gain a lot of experience. You, you look at your plans to see what works and what doesn't work, and you have to adjust them. And any plan, you can have 10 events and still continue to improve on those plans. And so who are some of the people that you have here? Well, first of all, we have, uh, right now we have Ken Miola, which is the police chief. This uh, not necessarily is, is his position every time, but it is the police department's position. So they will have captains in those positions or lieutenants that will come in and, and operate there. So you have well-experienced people who have gone through events like this in the past. Absolutely, yes. And the next uh, position back is the fire department position. Uh, they operate radios here to communicate with the uh, Kings on the Street. And it's a communication back and forth between the fire operations and the emergency operations center. So they're looking for resources that we need extra personnel, those types of things. We either go through mutual aid or we can contact the state and get the resources we need. So even though you're the fire chief, you're really not here as the fire chief. No, the fire chief today is uh, Deputy Mark, Mark Howard. He's the uh, operating the operations of the fire department, and my my position here is to just make sure that the coordination is is here for everyone everyone to operate. So, in a lot of ways, you're just the, the person in charge of everything. You're the main coordinator. Uh, city manager is. However, he uh, he's assisting with us through this whole project today. And which is great because we've got his experience from when he used to live in other areas that had a lot of these events. Okay. And this is, is this Bill? Bill's first one here for the City of King? Bill actually, uh, yes, it's his first time in the Emergency Operations Center operating. But Bill's position today is, is uh, in 2005, we had a lot of volunteers that wanted to help out, and we had no real way of communicating and coordinating that. Bill's position today is to coordinate our volunteers, and we have received... Uh, some phone calls and inquiries about being able to volunteer through this process. And he's one coordinating that. He's also coordinating the food um, through Nancy Vincent and Laura Thibodeau, who was actually at Heaven and Hall, preparing food for all the workers throughout this event. And there's really nothing worse than a lot of people who want to volunteer and go out on their own. And yeah. You don't want to rescue the volunteers. That's one of the reasons why we, we, we set up the coordinator's position, and, uh, just so that we don't have that issue.
Okay, and so, so are you the city manager today or are you the PIO? I'm the PIO today and doing Public whatever information I can do. Officer. That's right, and also helping Gary in any way I can. Ultimately, depending upon the severity of the storm and the disaster, you know, obviously there's other roles. Uh, the city council and the mayor could become more involved. Uh, I'll be interfacing with them and keeping them fully informed and bringing and asking them to come in if it's necessary. And uh, but Gary, of course, is the person who coordinates these events. Uh, I think he cut his teeth on the probably one of the more difficult events we've had, which was 05 flooding. Public Works Command. To and he did a wonderful job 24. there. And uh, of course, we're very, very. We have a lot of confidence in what he says and what he does. And I think all of our troops do as well. And then we have the, the mayor. How's it going, Mr. Mayor? Uh, very well, thank you. And I'm just here to offer moral support to our, to our Chief Lamro and City Manager and all the other people who are here today. And uh, it's not by it. It's a, it's a very, very efficient, good operation that's set up here to cover the city. And, uh, you know, we just had one tree come down, but we're right on it. And uh, other than that, uh, I did take a ride around before I got here look at the brooks. And the brooks that they're really not very high yet, but uh, we still got quite a lot to come, so we'll look for that. But this is a uh, good operation, doing a great job. I was listening to your son on the radio this morning saying you moved your car and because you learned from the 2005 yeah, we floods. We learned from the 2005. You know, that was funny. When that rain started coming down, the water was just up to my ankles, and within an hour, the water was up to my knees, and we moved my car, and we loaded stuff out of the garage, and we had, yeah, he, did, he gave me a great job and helped me a lot on that. Yeah. Then the gentleman over here that people want to complain about every time the house floods. <laughs> Yeah, this is Corp Bluequest. He's uh, a public works director. Uh, Corp's currently uh, working with the city. We're having now with the two parts of our academy. We'll be able to do all these investigations that we'll check out. Corp's public works has been a main role today in emergency services. In the past years, public works was kind of one of those divisions that, you know, always needed, was always behind the scene, and nobody ever recognized what they did. In today's world, they are part of emergency services. They are just as, just like the police and fire. They are all part of our process, and they play an active role in what we do. And one of the things I noticed um, Friday and Saturday, the public works um, people were out there cleaning out storm drains. Again, a lesson learned from 2005. Better to clean out and prevent. Absolutely. And so I, told them, I would say they were doing a heck of a job out there. They were all busy. Absolutely. A couple, of, uh, a couple of other things that we do, and uh, we're very lucky here in the community to have not only the, the cooperation through all these departments, uh, but we all work very well together. And that's the key to anything. There's no one individual, there's no one department that can operate in, in an event like this. It has to be a full city operation. And we've had volunteers, all of the city employees are volunteering to come and help and do different things. So we're very lucky here to have that type of uh, cooperation throughout the whole community. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break because this camera overheats quick when you do it. HV. Also, you okay, um, um, we're like talking about the public works director. We're talking about him, Justin King. Is he coordinating anything like the, with the dams, upstream, downstream, or any water flow? Yeah, we'll let Court uh, actually discuss that with you. He can so tell you what he is. Uh, the city has five high hazard dams. Um, two of them are located in the Town of Roxbury, uh, Goose Pond, Robin Hood. West Street. Uh, the department staff yesterday did go out and review all those dams. City engineer, a couple other staff members, they did mark them. Uh, currently, we have two employees that have gone out to the uh, water supply dams, and we're currently in St. Jerry's coordinating just to go out and take a look at the other dams prior to the start of the upcoming heavier rains later this afternoon. And we'll be monitoring those throughout the event. Uh, the city does have uh, what's known as emergency action plans that upon um, approval from the emergency management director and city, and city manager we would implement if necessary. So you would, if required, you would release water to so the less damage in case? Uh, act, none of these none dams of have capabilities of okay. having any water released. Um, the issue would come in is if the dams became overtopped, that's where we would then um, activate our emergency action plans for that particular dam. And one of the big things that are coming up, maybe you or the city manager, was the amount of money that we were going to have to spend on the Robin Hood Dam? Well, uh, we, we continue to work on that, and there are some options that the Public Works Department and the city engineer have been working on, and we anticipate coming forward to the city council within the next uh, month or so with a full report 
which we'll talk about um, uh, that those options. Uh, there might be some modifications to our, our first original um, option that we had selected, and so we'll be talking with council about that and also the community. Uh, it may also have an impact on what we do over on the Ash Wheeler, um, and, and that might be a, an, an, an additional conversation that takes place around the same time. So you can expect these things to be become very, very important conversations in the community through the council, community at large, and through our staff. Just, but one of the reasons that it resulted in some of the problems we had with the dam in 2005 today. I think it was the problems overall across the state of New Hampshire, which then I think uh, invoked the uh, State Dam Bureau to go around. What are some of the reasons you were talking about? Some of the reasons why we have to look at Robin Hood Dam and some of the other things. Well, it's been very interesting because you know the, the community it's, itself has, uh, you know, has understood these structures for you know for as long as several generations now. And I've never looked at them as extremely high hazard in any way, shape, or form. But we learned a lot after the 05 uh, flooding across the state. And as a result of that, the State Dam Bureau got more involved in inspections, although they were doing a lot of it before that as well, uh, and began to put high hazard uh, designations on these structures, which has caused us to have to go back out and look at how we might treat these structures. And, and, and so, you know, uh, this has become a very significant issue in our community because they're expensive improvements to make. But it's much more expensive, like the Mother's Day and the flood a few years ago. Which don't do. That's true, and there are environmental issues as well, uh, but there's also the concern that people have, and that is to make sure that money is well spent. How, what, to, what degree of uh, concern should we really have? So all of that's in the, uh, in the mix, and the conversation that will be uh, taking place here in the next few weeks uh, should be a very interesting one. Thank you. Okay, we're back, Chief. We got one more person. Well, there's actually more than one person. There's one more person in here. Uh, just to let everybody know, there's a lot of people here behind the scenes that aren't in this room that are actually working. Uh, you've got all the public works. You've got a lot of the fire department members out there, police department out on the street. But we also have the IT department here um, who is going to be with us the entire time, making sure that we have all the information we need, make sure that everything stays up and running. Um, you, if you just saw uh, Med Kuczynski just walk out for facilities, uh, he's going to play a large role today in uh, making sure that all the facilities are up and running. As he was just here today checking out the air conditioning, our new system uh, to save money has been coded so that Sundays are down so that we don't waste any, any energy. So they just came back in here to fix that for us. Um, so there's a lot of people out on the street, there's a lot of people, a lot of uh, employees that people don't see that are out here working. So I just want to make sure... If everything goes smoothly, all the employees, the police, the fire department did their job correctly. And if you don't see them and it's smoothly, then it's a great job. Well, there's a couple of ways to take that, but uh, I have all the confidence in the world of our employees in the city of Keene. They do whatever they can to, to make sure that uh, things are taken care of. Uh, the big thing today is safety. We want to make sure that people out on the street, that they're not out there unnecessarily, so we're going to keep them housed until... Uh, we absolutely have to get out there uh, when the wind starts blowing and the rain's coming up. It's not safe for anybody to be out there, so we need to keep everybody inside the buildings, and including our, our emergency personnel, to, to make sure they don't get hurt. That's kind of changed because in the past, you used to send policemen and firemen risk their lives protecting people from their own stupidity. Well, it's uh, the fact is, is you know we've got a lot of trees down on wires and there's a good chance that people are going to lose power uh, but there's no sense in risking people's lives for something that we're not going to be able to control it's uh, it's down on a wire we're not going to be able to control that so basically we'll check it just to make sure we'll stay in the trucks and we'll uh, head back if it's a life safety issue we will be there to take care of the problem okay. is ginger reyes uh, her normal job is working in the police department Today, uh, she's in the communications division here, and this is a huge, huge portion of what we do in here. She keeps track of everything that goes on in this, in this uh, whole event. She'll be documenting all the information so that when we're done with this process, we can submit it all to FEMA uh, to be able to get reimbursed, of course. But uh, she takes care of the phone. She takes care of uh, any type of questions that come in. She's the one that directs them where they need to go. And if you look at what we have here on the board, uh, this is a projection system, and this is what she's taking care of here. She's just documenting the log so everybody can see it. And then to the to the other side of it, we're just watching the uh, NOAA site to make sure we see where the storm is and where it's headed. Real time. Real time. And we have, usually have the TV on Channel 9 here for any local updates that may be, may be happening. 
because as the rain goes farther north, we may have the all clear, but you can have potential flooding tomorrow or the day after as the water runs down. That's correct. This storm is going north of us. Um, so what, anything that happens north of us is going to affect us down the road because whatever rain they have is going to come to us in the next day or two. Okay. Down through the river riverbeds. Thank you. When we look around this, this has to cost a, a lot of money. That's the communications are redundant. Everything, mo mostly in command center, is, is redundant. So, if the taxpayers want to know, how much it did it cost us, the keen taxpayers? Well, right now, we um, just in this one room here with computer systems and radios uh, and all the furnishings, we have about $28,000 tied up in this room. Uh, however, the taxpayer didn't pay any of that. Uh, basically, this was built on grants that we received through Homeland Security and uh, part of that process is through Vermont Yankee. As you're most aware, we're the host community for Vermont Yankee for an incident that occurs there and part of that is, is that they will support us and give us money to be able to do these types of things. So a lot of this money came from Vermont Yankee and Homeland Security in order to do that. All, all that money did. So it didn't cost the taxpayers any money at all. It, it came through private uh, donations and grants through Vermont Yankee through Homeland Security. The, um, I'm on the FOP committee as a city councilor, and you come to us often with grants. Whether you support nuclear energy or you don't like nuclear energy, Vermont Yankee Pay seems to be paying for a lot of stuff, a lot of emergency. Yeah, one of the, you know, Vermont Yankee through Homeland Security. Each year, the Homeland Security is given money from Vermont Yankee, and it's by federal regulation through the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, that they're mandated to be able to do those things. However, Vermont Yankee has been very good at not having to worry about the mandates. They do their share. They pay their share. And then once Homeland Security gets it, they spread that money amongst the areas that need it. And this last time here, of course, we're building a new fire station. As being the host community, they want to support us and be able to do what they need to do to help us out. So they did they did donate us, uh, grant us some money for that through Homeland Security. So our generator will be paid for through them. But um, they've done a good job. And again, we're not here to say pro or con uh, nuclear power, but they are here, and part of that process is to be able to support the functions. Okay. We're back to the PIO, Public Information Officer. That's me. That's you. What I think is unusual in this case, the governor declared a state of emergency prior to the storm. What does that mean for the city of King? Well, I think the importance of that, something like that, and I know the governor certainly is aware of it, is that by doing that, all of the federal aid that we might need is now available to us. Not only during the event should there be a need for something specific, but also, most importantly, the recovery after an event. So we're tracking all of our costs now because much of that could be reimbursable. And, you know, it's just really a, it's really a good thing when you know that you're going to be hit with a storm like this and you have time to do those kinds of legislative things uh, and executive things to be able to get that done and ready to go. Otherwise, if this had been like a surprise event and nobody knew what was going to happen, uh, then you're always chasing it after the fact. But in this way, we're prepared. All the paperwork and all the bureaucratic issues and the red tape can then be cleared and hopefully We'll do a very good job cleaning everything up and then settling out the cost of whatever the event happens to be. If I put my state yeah. hat on, and I think, what is it with an event like this? It's, if you meet the threshold, the federal government pays 75, we have a 12.5% match, and the state has about a 12.5% match. I think they're going to set a truck you know, there anyway. So. You know, I'm going to have to double check that. I don't know, to be honest with you. So maybe you might not want to put this piece in. Let me just quick check. the street. Water's getting higher. And of course, as you've just seen, people think it's kind of fun just to go down. But one of the problems with cars flying down the Foster Street, it causes these wakes. And for some of the, if you look really closely, these wakes just push over and they beat up against the foundations of people's houses, help contributing to basement flooding. 
just like a wake on <coughs> wake on a lake or a pond can have some side effects, negative side effects. Here at Beaverbrook Dam, <clears throat> well, the runoff from Beaverbrook Dam, there's just been um, word of a mandatory evacuation um, south Keene, south of Water Street. As you can see, the water is rising. We haven't had most, the majority of the rain yet. We've got maybe about two feet before it's under the roadway. <clears throat> about three, three and a half feet, then it'll be spilling over the roadway. Once it gets maybe four feet over the retaining wall on both sides, once it gets to the retaining wall, it'll just be flooding out this area. The people at Montessori School over right here, sandbagging up. Was here earlier in the day, about four, four and a half hours ago. As you can see, these iron pylons are basically covered. So that means the, the river is ra raised about another three feet in the last four, four and a half hours. Not only that, where it was dry up front, the water's backing up. So it's doing its purpose. It's co covering its. Con Here's these guys spending $14 million to clean up the pollution. Pollution that they, they themselves didn't even um, cause. Now, with this rain, high water. The question is, will they be able to finish it before the spring, the autumn rains come? They've been trying their best. Oh, it looks like the wind's coming again, which means we're getting ready for another band of rain. It looks like the new Y is in pretty good shape. We haven't had really a lot of wind yet, but doesn't look like there's any damage at all, which is good. They'll be making an awful lot of people happy. It looks like there's possibly one or two windows open. But I'm pretty sure they were open yesterday. Yep, pretty good. Which stand Irene, which stood Irene, pretty good. Which is good. As you can see, as you can see, we got a heck of a lot more water than we did yesterday. Again, it's doing its job. It could, it could, if we had a couple of more bands of really heavy rain, I'm pretty sure it'll hold its place. Matter of fact, this may become a waddling place for a migrant migratory birds as they get ready to head south in maybe another four to six weeks. I'm pretty sure this still will still have plenty of water here in four to six weeks. So as you can see the people who designed the Y and the YMCA people, they didn't destroy wetlands, they created wetlands. Traveling around Keene, seeing a lot of small twigs, a lot of leaves on the ground. 
but right here, this is the first um, major tree that I've seen falling over. Well, the rain's starting to come back. The winds are supposed to pick up, so we may find a few, few more before the evening's over. Just took a detour from Court Street up by the hospital. It looks like there's some power lines there. The fire, the fire department have had both sides of the bridges um, blocked off. But otherwise, so far, that's the only damage I've really seen around the Keene area. Hopefully, it'll stay that way. Well, this comes part of the dangerous part of the storm. The winds are starting to pick up. I would have to say these are the heaviest winds that I felt all day. They're heavy enough to rock my vehicle and my vehicle weighs over 5,000 pounds or maybe about 5,000 pounds. This is where the people, I've seen people out on their bikes Saw the guy from the Chinese restaurant pedal on his bike with a couple of bags. People are still ordering out. A couple other people walking their dogs. But again, this is a time you really have to be careful. A couple of these gusts of winds could easily snap a limb and cause some serious damage even possible serious injury. Back with the Chief, it's now afternoon. You look a little bit more calmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gaining, um, the storm actually, it seems to have gone far, farther west than we expected, or any expe anybody expected. So basically, we got, uh, we got some rain. Uh, looking across the, what everybody else is getting, we haven't got an actual figure yet here for Keene, but they're in the five to six inch range. Uh, we did get a little bit of flash flooding. Certain areas were flooding based on the fact that the storm drains were having difficulty draining it into the into the rivers. But that's uh, catching up. We've got all the roads back open except for a few that have trees down. Other than that, all the roads are pretty well open. I know the one uh, going up a court street by the hospital, the bridge. That was. I heard that maybe a transformer or something popped you and closed that road, that road down. For yeah, there's there's definitely wires, apparently wires down in that area. So uh, right now it's closed at Court Street. Public Service is doing an unbelievable job. Uh, they're out there. They're uh, they're not doing a lot of the uh, elevated work yet, but they're trying to get as many people back on as they can. Have you any the um, normal fire emergencies, um, life life issue? Runs. No, basically what we've had so far is uh, trees on houses. We've got a few trees on houses and those types of calls, but uh, medical emergencies have been minimal. So most people were playing it smart. I didn't see too many people out in town earlier. There's some this, now they think the storm's over with as the wind's picking up. Yeah, right now we're coming into the eye of the storm, which means we're going to get more wind. And people who think the storm may be over, it's not. There's still going to be some, uh, some wind and then possibly some rain behind that. We'll just go over here to um, the chief for a second. How's it going, chief? Good. How are you? You seem relaxed. Yeah, everything uh, seems to be working well. Um, yeah, under Gary's tutelage, there, uh, he's got things uh, <laughs> running very well for us. Uh, he, he's uh, an old expert at this uh, EOC thing, so uh, it, it's all working very fluidly. That's because he started really young, right? He did. I've, I've gone out of town, I've been going around the town, city, I've seen your police officers out there, only seen one with their blue lights on, so crime is pretty good today. It, it's actually been very calm. Uh, most of their responses have been to areas of concern relative to flooding and, and uh, trees down and yeah, such. Right uh, otherwise, it's been very quiet in the city, and uh, they're just out maintaining the presence in some of the areas where the flooding occurred and people voluntarily evacuated, so getting out and just patrolling those neighborhoods. And I went by the college, more and more cars. It seems like more and more people are coming in on their own. Yeah, I really haven't gotten updates about uh, people coming into the college area there. I, I know they were still accepting students uh, if they chose to make the trek today, so uh, they were prepared for that, and it all seems to be working out. Yeah, because the parking lot is pretty well full down on lower. Yeah, yep. 
So it's good that people haven't been going out doing stupid things, getting up, getting drunk. And you have to yeah, them. absolutely. Um, I, I think because of the notice of this storm and the preparations that were made, people uh, went out in advance, got what they needed, and were kind of hunkering down in their homes until it was over. Uh, and, and now, like the fire chief said, uh, people, it's the calm before the second phase. And, and, and I was just outside a few minutes ago and noticed traffic starting to pick up on Main Street and in Central Square. So uh, we're hoping those people are paying attention and get back home before the, the high winds start. Because one of the things, maybe the stupidest thing that I remember the 2000 flood was having watching an individual with a 24 pack pedaling through the water through the high winds. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I missed that uh, image, but uh, yeah, people will go out and do what they feel they can do uh, in, in lieu of the warnings they've been given, and, and, and that's where we come in, and uh, the fire rescue and the police being out there to, to try to keep that under control. Thank you. Nope. People always like to see you working. <laughs> I guess they do. Yeah. Nope. So it's, we just got done talking to the du two chiefs. Mm -hmm. Now your people are more, more people are calling concerning water, trees down. Yeah, it's been, it, certainly I think it has slowed down. The, uh, the rain has uh, lightened up quite a bit, which has allowed the uh, stormwater system to catch up. A lot of our earlier flooding today are in areas that we typically do have that kind of street flooding uh, because of the age of our system, uh, in some cases being over 75 years old and, and being at capacity. It takes a while for the system to catch up when that um, amount of quantity of water comes down in that very short period of time. Other than that, um, our flows at our wastewater treatment plant have started to increase somewhat, um, but that's not ex unexpected. The next thing we'll be waiting for now is to see the back end of the storm and see how much of additional wind and wind damage may occur. You talk about wastewater on some of the... That's when we get in trouble sometimes when you can't handle well, the capacity of the EPA. Well, the issues are certainly, and in, in EPA does not give you a pass even though you have an emergency or a flooding event, you're supposed to be still in compliance. Uh, with uh, your permit and what uh, happens particularly at our wastewater treatment plant within our older uh, sewer system we get a lot of infiltration so as the water starts rising up in the groundwater around the springs and uh, around the streams and, and brooks uh, it increases the flow to the wastewater treatment plant that has the potential of pushing more water through and not being able to for the system to pick up, uh, up uh, uh, taking care of it to comply with a permit, but right now the staff down there has taken all our wet weather. We have a wet weather plan. They have implemented that, and right now there are no issues. Thank you.